Welcome to DowerChin.com. Today we'll be talking about a program, it's a program called Rebel, from a company called Escape Motions. Uh, and I'm going to be trying this out on my Surface Pro 3. Now, uh, to maintain as much quality as possible, what I did was I'm piping it through a device that's recording my HDMI output from my Surface Pro 3. Unfortunately, because it's doing that, uh, the device only can capture in, in full HD, which is 1920 by 1080. So it's downsampled the higher resolution of my Surface Pro 3 down to a bit of a smaller resolution. But for the most part, it should be fine. Uh, I think you'll still get the idea of how this program works. And what it is is a program that really uh, demonstrates watercolors and acrylics and uh, as a natural media paint program. I suppose unlike as, uh, similar to some things like Art Rage or Corel, uh, Corel Painter and those other programs. But the big thing, obviously, the price tag is $60, which is quite a good price tag and it is also cross-platform between Windows and OS 10. Uh, so before we get started with the program though, uh, one side note is uh, you know, it is re definitely recommended that you are running the Surface Hub, uh, which I have over here somewhere. Um, sorry folks, I so much stuff running over here. Oh, there it is my surface hub so you gotta be sure that you're running the surface hub so that you can get the most out of having your 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 pen so you can tweak the settings for your for your sensitivity for the tip uh, I kinda like to keep it in this kind of range and uh, if you're not familiar with this tool it's on the Windows Store I highly recommend getting it because basically what it is is it allows you to tweak the settings of your pen and it's something that uh, didn't come normally packaged with the Surface, so highly, highly recommend it. Because uh, other things you can do is you can you know, um, basically determine what the top button does, uh, which doesn't hold a lot right now, basically being OneNote, OneNote Desktop, and what the Windows button does. I turned it off because it's kind of interesting, so you don't tap it by accident uh, when your hand is gliding across the tablet to suddenly exit your programs into the, the home screen. So highly recommend getting this program. Uh, definitely worth your while because you can do it for the main purpose of being able to tweak the tip of, of the of the pen here. So beyond that though, another thing that you want to consider getting is uh, updated Intrig drivers. Now Microsoft did acquire Intrig and because of that if you try to go to Intrig's website it no longer exists. However, uh, serviceproartist.com uh, he actually uh, has uh, the last dr available driver uh, for the Intrig pen. So if you go to serviceproartist.com uh, or Google it around, you'll get a link to it. That essentially, take, essentially takes you to his blog post that you know, shows that obviously if you try to go to the Intrig.com website, you don't get it, and, but you can grab the driver from here. And once you download it, uh, it, 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 it'll ensure that the pen works optimally for, for programs like Photoshop as well as Rebel. So, all right, without further ado, let's just go talk about what the program. So we're going to launch it and let's see. I got the over here. I'll launch it from here and you're in it. So one of the first things you may notice, uh, it's a bit of a jab at the program right now, is that it has no touch capability. If I try to touch with my with my fingers, I actually end up drawing, which is not what I want to do. So it's really more or less a program that's, uh, that's made for uh, still having a keyboard and mouse. So the default size canvas that opens up on my Surface Pro 3 here is 1280 by 900. And so the cool thing about the program is you automatically have a white canvas to work with and uh, the watercolor tool is available for you. So let's choose some colors and we'll just kind of dive into uh, the program here. So I'll zoom in a little bit using the, the plus. Now the program does work a little bit better with a keyboard uh, because it is not touch enabled. Uh, the other uh, con is actually the, because uh, it's more of a desktop program, the fonts are really kind of small. You kind of kind of you, you got to kind of hunt and peck to get to the the menus up on top here. So that's something that uh, that you that I hope that they'll address in future updates and revisions. That they'll they'll have um, a bit more of a touch friendly version, at least with the, with the option of pinch zoom uh, to make uh, move, moving around easier. So all right, let's just start off with the with the paintbrush tool here, and you see you get the size, pressure. You can kind of tweak the size and the pressure of your pen, as well as the amount of water and some some brushes to work with so we'll use the default ones here to start going in so one of the cool things to notice is this just like any other program is you know you can basically start drawing and put some color down now if we let it go for a few seconds you'll notice that it, it uh, you'll see that the canvas absorbs 
the color, which is really kind of cool. I, I, not many programs go to that kind of level of detail. You notice that it's actually drying on the paper now. And so now it becomes a solid color. I could have more making it a little bit more wet. And what's kind of cool is you can use something with the blow tool and actually kind of blow the colors. So you kind of, I'm kind of blowing the, in this direction, I'm kind of blowing the color. And we get a different color over here and just kind of, kind of uh, add more color to the mix here. And I can then use the blow tool here to kind of blow the color. And you see how it kind of, kind of spreads across the paper. This is really cool. Um, it's really kind of a neat feature I've not really seen in many other programs. Uh, it's, it's, it's very, very neat that you can actually, it really does a nice job of simulating how the natural media is, is supposed to be. And if you, you know, if you're doing any watercolor work, uh, it actually, you know, it, it adds an extra sense of realism to using it, which is really kind of neat. So I can, and it'll blend the colors in as well. And it does have pressure sensitivity. So if I go lighter and then press down a little bit harder and harder and harder, you'll, it, it will, you'll see it kind of, you know, basically expand out and you know, get lighter to darker as I go along. So I go light, dark, darker. And you see how the, how the the colors spread out. So it does a really nice job of simulating, uh, really how, how how a paper medium would actually uh, absorb uh, colors and stuff. So it's really kind of neat. Now, you know, obviously the default one is white, but under here in this little palette over here is, is a paper option. You click on that, and suddenly you get all these other extra options. It's like, oh, you want a different grain of paper? How about this this type here? How about a different color? How about like a beige color maybe? And we hit OK. Well, it doesn't really affect your drawing at all. It just now your your paper is that color. So it's really kind of cool. So you can experiment with different textures and, and colors that it gives you. So how about like uh, how about this uh, this paper seven over here? How about how about a bluish color? How about a bluish color for paper? And so you kind of get that that feel. So if I zoom in using a plus key here, you can see that there. You can you can actually see the the grain of the paper below it. So, you know, we can go back and choose something else. So it's kind of nice. I, I can do this without having to worry about destroying my drawing in any way, which is, which is kind of cool. So it's a very, very nice, nice uh, feature of the program to be able to do that. And let me just go back to, I don't like the color. Let's go back to like kind, of a, kind of a beige, just parchment type color. Give it some fine grain for paper one. And there, so that's what it looks like. So that's kind of nice. The other other options for for painting, obviously, you have acrylics. So if I choose a, a like a light blue here, and I can go light and push a little harder and harder and harder, and you see that, uh, you know, oops, as I tap that part there, I can get to smearing the, you know, basically with the with the acrylic tool, I get that paint feel, and if I zoom in a little bit, you'll see that that uh, way the, the way the paint effect is. Now, uh, oh, one thing you can do with the uh, surfaces uh, top button, uh, where is it? Uh, with, the, with the topmost button, you hold it down, you can actually drag the canvas. That's kind of a nice thing that is enabled for the pen. So you can hold it and drag it so you can move it around. So that's kind of handy. Uh, but you can, so you can see, as you close, you can see, you can see how the paint builds up and you see how it, the brush stroke there kind of has. You can see all the brush strokes that I've gone into. Uh, the same thing with pastels. For example, you can see how it kind of like if you ever used real pastels, you see it it uh, goes along the grain of the paper, and as you go down further and further, you see it build up a lot more. So it's really really kind of kind of a nice thing, and um, got a good old blend tool here, so you can basically bend blend the you know, basically just like with your with your pen with your finger, you kind of blend the colors out, add some other colors in. Oops, sorry, no, not that, that. Use back to the pastel tool, for example, mix it in here, go back to the blend tool, and I can kind of smoosh it, get some uh, get some other textures going there. And of course, the other tools, you know, no, no paint tool is ever complete without the trusty old pencil. So I have a pencil over here, so I can basically do some drawing over here. I have no idea what I'm drawing, but so let's get the, get the pencil tool, get your ink pen, and you know this is also pressure sensitive, so you can see like, I'm, I'm going light and then go dark, and you see that it's interesting is that uh, it, you see how the how the ink 
spreads across the paper as well. So the, even that has has a uh, has some sensitivity to the fact that there's a canvas below and it's going to absorb the ink. So the darker I draw, it spreads across. So that's actually a very very cool cool feature. Uh, got markers. Yeah. So let's use a different color from the marker. So you can see that the marker tool. It's like a highlighter over here. You can kind of see how it kind of blends in accordingly, which is really, really nice. Uh, airbrush. No no paint tool is ever complete without the airbrush tool. And so, you know, you can tweak the settings. And you're going to get heavier and heavier, heavier if you want. So those are all the options you have. And of course, the eraser. You can just erase. Now, what's kind of not nice is that it's not, 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 not just a plain erase everything all at once. You kind of see that that with with the, my pressure, I can go hard, but it never really quite. It gives you the real feel of you know, basically erasing if it was like a real piece of paper. So that's really kind of nice. So it gives you you kind of give you that that um, real real feeling of working on a on a real canvas or or piece of paper so it's really really kind of a nice nice tool so other, other things here you have your undo redo uh, other things you have I'm going to get the color pickers you have uh, the tilt which I haven't really played around with much uh, dry so obviously we're doing wet medium you can have the dry option you can add water to things so if I add, more, add water so if I want to work with this again I can kind of add water here and put enough of it down uh, you'll see that uh, the, how, how, how it's kind of spreading. So if, it was, if I'm actually adding water to a canvas, I can kind of blow again and see how it's spreading because I, I've, I've wet the colors now so I can I can spread them. It takes a bit of takes a bit of used to it for this one. I haven't really played around with it too much, but see it. But I, I wet it, but it was dry, so now it's a little bit wet so I can kind of blow it and you know, get some interesting effects out of that. And of course I can just Use a blend tool to push things around as well. So, so there you have it. So that's kind of moving the colors around and swirls everything together. So it's a really nice natural media type of tool. So it's really hard to beat for the price. It's a fantastic little tool. So, so there you have a nice little demo running the program on my Surface Pro Three. Uh, you know, I don't really notice any major sna performance snafus. Now, of course, it has layers. I want to be, before I even uh, mention anything else. There's layers, so I can hide layers. I can hide the canvas. I can basically go and in, you know, invert it. Uh, I can make a new layer on top of this. So, second layer. I can hide this one and I can continue to work. Now, one of the interesting things is that that because there's, there's a lot of calculations behind the scenes for the canvas work. If I were to pick a color and change the size of the brush and I start going really fast you'll notice that uh, my cursor is already gone to the bottom and it's still trying to catch up so that's something that uh, you, have to, you have to contend with there's a lot of work to try to do calculate um, you know, how things blend in and everything so if you go really really fast like that yeah it, it's gonna it's gonna take a bit of time to to catch up even with an i5 processor on my surface pro 3 it still still will do that so, for example, do the same thing again. See, so I'm already done drawing, but it's still working on calculating it. But you know, once again, it is trying to simulate the natural media. See, it's spreading, so it's the colors are banding together and it's spreading across as if the if the paper or canvas was absorbing my colors. So it's really kind of neat. So there you have it. A look at Rebel on my Surface Pro 3. Uh, another video I'll do later on is I'm going to take a look at using this program on my Toshiba Encore 2 Write. You know, obviously the Encore 2 Write is a less powerful machine, being a uh, being a uh, Atom processor. It, it uh, we'll see how well it performs, and uh, we'll you know, we'll go from there. So uh, if you have any questions about the program or things I haven't seen or something you want to see the, um, with this program on my Surface Pro 3 or even on the Toshiba Encore 2 Write, um, you know, let me know. Subscribe and uh, you leave.